Merci. Morning. Eba mutu tu. Eh, this is one thirty fifty the
in Israel. Uh -uh. No, wow. <laughs> <laughs> we found her. She was still praying. She was still praying at the wall. But we thank God. <laughs> eh? <laughs> ah. Most I did this. 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 Christian quarter. Yes. Right now we are in the Jewish quarter. Okay. And this is the city center. Okay. <laughs> of the Jewish quarter. Oh, okay. Now, a couple of things I want you to observe while we're here. First of all, look at the buildings. Are they looking old? No. 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 Definitely not as old as the Arab market buildings. Yes. Mm -hmm. Why is there a difference? This is one thing I'm going to share with you. The second thing I'm going to talk about is this magnificent big building. And then I also going to want, I want to talk to you about this golden thing right there. Mm. Okay? Okay. So... Menorah. The menorah. Yeah. <laughs> the story starts... You know what? Let's start almost at the end. Okay. In 1948, there is a big war all over the country. We talked about it. Uh -huh. Jews are fighting against the Arabs. Now, Jerusalem, I don't know if you remember the map I showed you in the first day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Second day. Jerusalem was supposed to be international city, according to the UN decision. But the Jews and the Arabs did not accept it. And they were fighting over Jerusalem. And it so happened that the Jewish forces conquered the west side, and the Arab forces, basically Jordan, conquered the east side, including the old city of Jerusalem. Mm. This whole place was in the hands of Jordan at the end of the war. Now, Jerusalem was supposed to be international, but it was in the heart of Arab areas. And the Arabs put a siege around the city, trying to make the Jews in the west side surrender. But the Jewish forces managed to break the siege and save the, the Jews that lived in the south side of the city. But there's a smaller group of Jews, Jews that lived here in the old city, in the Jewish quarter. They were in a siege within the siege, because they were on the Arab side. And even though the Jewish forces tried, they failed. And eventually, the Jewish people that lived here had to surrender to the Jordanians. The Jordanians 
took women and children and sent them to the Jewish side and they took all the men as prisoners of war. The men that did not die in the battle. Later on, they exchanged prisoners. Later on, they exchanged prisoners with Israel, so all the, the people that did not die in the battles came safely to Israel. But the Jordanians, after they conquered the Jewish quarter, they destroyed it. Wow. They blew up the buildings. Only in 1967, when Israel conquers back this whole area, then they could rebuild. So these buildings are new because they were built only after 1967. There were other buildings here before, but they were blown up by the Jordanians. So this is one thing. Out of all the buildings that the Jordanians blew up, the most famous building is this synagogue known, it has a name. It really does have a name, but nobody knows the name. Everybody knows it by the nickname. Okay. And the nickname is the Ruined Synagogue. Because for most of its history, it was in ruins. In the 18th century, a group of Jews came here from East Europe. They bought the land and they paid money to the Arabs to build a synagogue. The thing is, you don't pay all the money at the beginning, right? You pay some, the constructors, they start to build, and if they continue, then you pay them more until they finish. Thing is that the Jews paid a little bit of money. The Arabs built and built and built, and suddenly they realized that there's no more money coming in. So they stopped halfway. They went to the Jews and said, give us more money. The Jews say, oops, <coughs> no more money. And so the building was half built, huh. like in ruin, for many years. Only in the 19th century, a new group of Jews come, they bring more money, they pay the debt, and they allow the, uh, the building to be built. So it was standing, basically like what you see today, it was the largest and most impressive building in the Jewish quarter. Until 1948. In 1948, this is the first building that the Jordanians blew up. So again, it's in ruins. In 67, you think the Jews rebuilt it? They actually left it in ruins. Because they wanted the world to see what the Muslims did to a holy Jewish site in compared to what the Jews did not do to the holy Muslim sites. Because in 1967, the Jews could destroy the Temple Mountain mosques. But they didn't. Why not? We'll talk later. But they didn't. So the Muslims destroyed the holy Jewish site. The, the Jews did not destroy the Muslim holy site. And Israel wanted the world to see that. But only about 15 years ago, someone said, we think that the world got the point. Can we please build the synagogue? <laughs> So a little more than a decade ago, they finally finished building the new old synagogue, ruined synagogues, exactly in the same size and shape as the original. Okay. This is what the original looked like. Yes. Now, you know what? Why the Jews did not destroy the mass on the Temple Mount? In 67, they had the opportunity. There was no army to stop them. We could blow up the mosques, which will leave a room to build the temple. Hmm. So why didn't we? Because it's a holy place. It's a holy place. It's a holy place. Because it's a holy place to the Jews, we need to destroy the mosque and build the temple. 
But yeah, Rocky yeah. Said, I think two things. A, it's a holy place for the Jews, yeah. and B, they probably didn't want to but you said it's lay a precedence of destroying holy places, even though it wasn't their holy place. That's my idea. No, you said something earlier. Yes. You said something There's a political reason. Mm -hmm. a, a security story. reason story. and a short story. Okay. <laughs> short story first. Politically, this country is a Jewish country. Yes. It built. It was built by Jewish people. Yes. But the Jews that built this country are secular people. Okay. The majority of the Jews that live in Israel today is secular. Mm. Now. The government is always secular. There are religious people in the government, but the prime minister is always secular. Mm. What will happen if there will be an opportunity to rebuild the temple? How much power, political power, the temple will give to the religious people? Mm. The secular government, I'm not sure they really want <laughs> that there will be a temple. Mm. And they are the majority. So it was very convenient politically to say we cannot build the temple, there is a mosque. Mm. That's politically. Mm. Security, the war in 1967 was between Israel against Egypt and Jordan Syria. and Syria. Yeah. About 200, 2 million people against about 50, 60 million people. Mm. More, more than 100 million people. Mm. But it's between Israel and three Arab countries. What will happen if the Jewish people will destroy the third holiest site for Islam? What about all the Muslims in England? All the Muslims in the United States? What will they do if the third holiest place for them will be destroyed by the Jews? And what about the largest Muslim country in the world? Which one? Egypt. No. Egypt. Population wise, Population. India. India. Indonesia. Indonesia. <laughs> this wow. is much more dangerous for free, you know what? Let's yes. take all the Jewish people 12 million people against 1. Point something billion. So, security is also smart not to mess right now, at least. But the story is the most important reason. When the Romans, I go back 2,000 years ago, when the Romans took over and they appointed governors, like Pontius Pilate, yes? One of the governors, not Pontius Pilate, was a very smart man. When he realized that he's going to govern the Jewish people, he said, I must understand these people. I cannot just govern people with not understanding. I want to understand the people. What does it mean there is only one God and you cannot even see him? It doesn't make sense. So, he called to his chambers here in Jerusalem, the two most important rabbis that lived in the country in his time happened to be two of the most important rabbis that ever lived. And he told them, you have to teach me You have to teach me about Judaism, but I'm a very busy man. The time I have for you to teach me all about Judaism is the time I can stand on one leg. <laughs> one leg. On one leg, like so. The reaction of one rabbi was exactly your reaction. He started to laugh. He <laughs> said, are you crazy? Judaism is so deep, vast, big. You cannot do that. Uh. But the other rabbi, he said, no problem, I can do it easily. So you can imagine this Roman governor standing on one foot. This rabbi looks at him in the eyes and says this. Judaism means never do to others what you don't want them to do to you. Uh, the rest of it, go and study. The rest of it, go and study. Never do to others what you don't want them to do to you. And even Jesus is using this sentence. Love your neighbor like yourself is the same idea. If 
in the heart and center of Judaism. Maybe because I have been friends with it. Now, <laughs> what still? The Jews are waiting for the temple. Again, not all of them, but many. They pray and pray and pray for the temple to be rebuilt. We didn't destroy it. You suffer from the bugs? You want to move away? No, it's okay. It's okay. How will the Jews get the temple? There are a few options. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to share with you a racist joke. Okay. But it's on my account, so I'm allowed to tell it. Okay. Are you ready? Yes. If you take two Jews and you put them in an empty room, mm -hmm. you will get at least three opinions. Mm. At least. Okay? So, it means that in every aspect of life, the Jewish people, they argue, they have opinions. Mm. And here's a question. When the Messiah will come, remember the Jews still wait. Yes. When he will come, how exactly it's going to be? What's going to happen? So some people say, in order for the Messiah to come, we have to go to the Temple Mount, we have to destroy the mosque and build the temple. When we will have the temple, then the Messiah will come. Another group of Jews say, no, 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 you don't understand. How will we know that the person that we think is the Messiah is really the Messiah? Because in his time, when he will come, we will then have the opportunity to destroy the mosque and build the temple. But first the Messiah will come, then we will build the temple. A third group of people say, you both get it wrong. Mm. We don't know how to build the temple. Mm. We lost that knowledge. But we don't need to know. Because when the Messiah will come, God will send the temple complete from heaven. If that is true, then as we talk now here, we do this for the bugs, I don't know, there will be an earthquake and sound and light, and suddenly you'll see a building coming from the sky. Mm. It can happen in the next two minutes. Yes. Yeah. What is it? Ooh, a cat. Something was licking my leg. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it's for Jesus and what is the touch of it? It was the temple. It was the temple. The temple is coming. Ah, the temple is, the temple is coming. Now. Now, if I truly believe that this is the way it's going to be, I must prepare myself. Yes. Because it can happen in the next five Anytime. minutes. Yes. Now, the minute the temple will stand on the temple mount, we will have to renew the services, the tax, the, the things, the sacrifices. But when they did it 2,000 years ago, they had certain tools that they had to use, the priests. We need to make sure all the tools will be ready. So there's a group of people that studied the Torah deeply, all the commandments God gave us about worship in the temple and they rebuilt all the tools all the tools are now ready waiting the only thing we're missing is the temple mm. one you know, I will say, the most important and most famous tool that was used inside the building of the temple it's the, the golden menorah menorah mm. yeah menorah means the candelabra Mm -hmm. This is what gave oh, light yeah. to the temple. Yes. And the way it's built right here, it is written in the Torah, God's commandments. This is how it should look like in the material. In the past, it's called gold. Real gold. 
real gold. It's part real. of the deal. Special <laughs> kind of olive oil. Hmm? It's going special kind of olive oil. Mm -hmm. Goes to the top seven branches, mm -hmm. and that's what gives light nice. to the temple. So you see that we are ready. Always <laughs> 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 the temple, and it's coming. If the minute you finish laughing, the temple will come. <laughs> yes, sir, but I will. The next thing you will see are a bunch of Jews running here, open the, sick, the door, the safety yeah. door, picking this up, straight to the temple. Okay? And this is a real thing, ready to be used in the temple. The only one. The only one so far. But you need only one. Okay. Yes. Waiting. You can wait, you can build the second one for, you know, but you need only one. Only one, yeah? This menorah became a very powerful symbol because of the destruction. The Romans that destroyed the temple, the general was a guy called Titus. When he goes back to Rome, he's the son of the emperor. Later he became the emperor. He makes sure that in Rome, they build a beautiful big arch. How many of you have been to Rome? There is a big arch right next to the Colosseum, still yes. standing. One yes. of the only arches that still stand yes. from the Roman time. And on this arch, they chiseled, arch made of stone, they chiseled a scene. And the scene are the Jewish prisoners going to Rome after the defeat. And what you see mainly is that they carry the menorah from the temple. Okay. So the menorah became the symbol of the Jewish destruction by the Romans. The Romans made the menorah symbol of the destruction of the Jews. We can imagine that when the Jews come back and rebuild a Jewish state here, it took them almost 2,000 years. What becomes the symbol of the state of Israel is the menorah. It symbolizes that we are back here. Mm. And if you look in the internet, what is the symbol of the state of Israel? You have the menorah and two leaves of a branch of olive oil, all olive tree. To symbolize that we wish for peace. Mm. Okay, so this is a very powerful thing for the Jewish people. And this particular one is going to be served in the temple eventually. Christians. We'll go and take some pictures. Uh -huh. We'll pick the end. Okay. Oh, that one there. Yeah, I saw that. The Read it. Yeah, status. None. I saw that. Civilization gone. Philistine gone. Sarai Empire gone. Babylon gone. Persian gone. Greek gone. Rome gone. What was good about it is that when the Jews came back, before they built the new buildings that you see all around, since there were no buildings because the Jordanians blew them up, archaeologists could finally dig under to find the history of Jerusalem, at least in the area of the Jewish quarter. And they found some very interesting findings. The first one I want you to see is this right here this is very unique finding what you have here is a wide wall very wide it was of course much higher originally we found only the base but i talked about it before i will remember remind you good archaeologists when they dig and they realize that they found something after they understand what they found if they're smart they keep digging because maybe there's something under. And the archaeologists that that deer found, 
the ruins of buildings you see over there mm. under the wall under and outside the wall they found ruins of buildings now usually people say okay there was a city here part of jerusalem and then the city was destroyed later in time someone else came and built a wall on the ruins of the buildings that's how it usually works but the archaeologists that dug here were very, very happy, excited, dancing when they realized that the houses and the wall are from the same time. Why they were dancing and happy? Because archaeologists in Israel, they work slower than anywhere else in the world. Why? Because they work with only one hand. Why do they work with only one hand? Because the second hand always holds the Bible. This is a joke, of course. It's a joke. But here's the thing. Everywhere in the world when you dig, you find ruins, it's very interesting and you learn a lot about history. But when you dig here, the history is the Bible. And archaeology can help us prove or disprove the Bible. And archaeologists that dig around, definitely in Jerusalem, even if they tell you otherwise, they lie. At least in the back of their mind, they will always try to prove the Bible from what they find. Now, when they realized that their houses and the wall were built by the same people, it means the people that built the houses destroyed their own houses to build the wall. They were very excited because they remembered a scripture from the Bible. They ran to the book of Isaiah. Isaiah lived here 2,700 years ago, exactly the time of this wall and houses. And when they opened the book of Isaiah, they could read, And you have numbered the houses of Jerusalem, and the houses have you broken down to fortify the wall. Boom! Archaeological wow. proof wow. to a biblical story. Wow. This wow. is a huge wow. Wow. Yeah. wow. Archaeological proof. Wow, the book here is the wow. So, Mr. Isaiah was
Mind the guy. Okay, we're walking this way. illustration on the wall how it looked like so Roman this? style street we call it car well, the Romans called it car this is original it's here but it's it's here. Here. the picture is the chazi when we have it where is she I'm going to Lara, Lara, Three, four, five, six, seven. 
seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two. <laughs> All captured. Six forty six seconds. of the Hebrew man and also Jesus from Nazareth and Maria Magdalene. Einstein, Jeremiah, the Dilem and the Kohan, they know something about the language of the Hebrew man. The language of the Hebrew man. Speak the language of the Hebrew man. Speak the language of the Hebrew man. Speak the language of the Hebrew By now, I think about one hour later. Okay. Mommy, mommy, JP. What I need to As the last before we enter. <laughs> yes, sir. 
Thank you, our chief organizer, Pastor Daddy. Can only play kiss. We are waiting you know, for the flight. Even at work, when people were talking, I saw people give you 700 visits. 